Written communications only appear on the BEC section of the CPA exam. These are basically essay questions, and while they can be overwhelming to CPA exam candidates, they can be easily mastered with a good plan. In today's video, I am going to give you my best tips to help you ace the written communication section of the business environment and concept section of the CPA exam. So keep watching. Hey future CPAs, this is Ala Abu Dayya. I'm a licensed CPA in the state of Colorado and I help students pass the CPA exam and become CPAs. If this is your first time here and you're interested in becoming CPAs, start by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell in order not to miss any of my videos. Written communication tasks appear only in the BEC section of the CPA exam. You will get three written communications in the fifth testlet, which is the last one, out of which two will be graded and one will be a pretest question. And since you don't know which one is the pretest question, you should take care of all three written communication questions and treat them as if all of them will count in your score. To learn the structure of the CPA exam, watch this video. Comment below and tell me if you find written communication questions to be challenging in comparison with others. In today's video, I will explain how to master written communication questions. I also will give you a real example of a written communication question from the AICPA sample tests at the end of this video. So make sure to keep watching till the end of this video. So what are written communications? Written communication tasks consist of a case study involving a writing skill exercise. You will be required to write your response to a related scenario or situation in a form of business memo or letter. In other words, the written communication tests your ability to address the needs and concerns of a specific scenario. Your response may include writing a letter or a memo containing the correct information about the given scenario or situation, which will usually ask you to explain something. BEC written communications are initially computer graded for keywords, sentence structure, and essay format. If your initial score is near 75, your written communications may be reviewed by a human in order to help you get the passing score. Comment below and tell me if you faced written communications in preparing for your CPA exam or not yet. So how to answer written communications? Writ written communications form 15% of the BEC exam score. To earn points for the section, you must read a description of a situation or scenario and write a document that responds to that scenario in a professional manner. The response type is specified in the question. It may include a memo or a letter to a client. Here are my best nine tips to help you master the written communications. Tip Number one, read the given scenario carefully to understand what the question is asking about. And based on that, determine the ideas you want to write about in your written communication. Tip number two, create sentences based on the ideas you want to write about, which should address the topic of the question. A smart thing to do is to write down your basic ideas on a paper which is usually provided by your testing center. Organize these ideas in a logical form. Tip number three, organize out each idea into a paragraph. You must have basically an introductory paragraph, two to three body paragraphs, and a conclusion paragraph. So your whole document should contain four to five paragraphs, and each paragraph just should consist of four to seven sentences. The first thing comes the introductory paragraph, which is the first paragraph of your document. It will basically give an overview and state the purpose of your document. Always start your introductory paragraph 
by restating the question you are answering. In the remaining part of the introductory paragraph, should address the purpose of your document. After that comes two or three body paragraphs, which must provide details of your answer. Each paragraph should begin with a topic sentence and then supporting sentences. To make it easier for you, always write the topic sentence first and based on it, write the remaining supporting sentences of that paragraph. After that comes the final paragraph, which is the conclusion paragraph. This paragraph usually ends the document with your final thoughts. Always keep your conclusion simple and professional. Tip number four. Read again your answer from the beginning to the end and make all necessary corrections. Never fall in love with your first draft. Check for misspelled words or incomplete sentences. Keep in mind that you will be graded on the organization of your document, sentence structure, grammar, thoughts, and spelling. You do not need to be an expert about the topic they are asking you about, but make sure to stick on the topic they are asking you about. For example, if they are asking about leases, you should stick to this topic and not talk about bonds. Make sure also to use the accounting terms you learned during studying. Tip number five, make sure to use the spell check offered by the exam program to help you detect any misspelled words. Always use full sentences. Avoid using abbreviations, bullet points, number lists, and charts. You will lose points if you use those because your answer will be graded by machines, which are programmed to check the grammar and sentence structure. And bullet points, for example, are not complete sentences, which will negatively impact your scoring. Tip number six. Use standard business English and avoid writing more than what is needed. You don't need to have creative writing skills. It is easier than you think. Stay professional, keep it short and simple, and straight to the point. Always capitalize the first word of each sentence and pay attention to your grammar, spelling, and word usage. And for the people who face difficulties in writing or do not use English as their uh, mother language, I recommend you practice English writing using different applications. For example, there's an application called Grammarly, which will help you learn writing skills, including grammar, sentence structure, and spelling. So you should practice using any of those applications out there which can help you in that. Tip number seven, stay on topic. If your response is off topic or offers advice that is clearly illegal, you will not receive any credit. Make sure to address the question appropriately and write to the audience mentioned in the question. Always ask yourself these questions. Is my content relevant to the topic? Is my content helpful to the intended reader? If your answer is no, then you should go back and do some modifications. Tip number eight. Practice written communication questions using the AICPA sample tests, which give you real exam screens and questions. So it will help you get familiar with how these questions look like and how to answer them. These tests are found on the AICPA website. Just go to AICPA.org, search for sample tests, and you will find them. And finally comes tip number nine, which is budget your time. I recommend allocating 15 to 20 minutes to each written communication, which means almost an hour to complete or to complete all three written communications. Make sure you go into the exam with a plan as to how you will manage your four hours and how much time you want to leave for your written communications. Track your progress to ensure that you don't go out of time. Most importantly, don't overthink the question or the answer. Stay confident and focused. And remember 
to keep your eye on that clock. Okay, guys, so here's an example of written communication from the AICPA sample exams, and um, this is a real written communication, like it, it, it is a prior exam question. So I'd like to show you this question. So here is the exam screen, as you see, business environment and concepts, Tesla one, two, three, four, and five. Written communications always appear in Tesla number five, and as I mentioned previously, you'll get three written communications out of which one will be a pretest question. Um, here is the, the countdown clock, which you must keep your eye on during the exam. And here's an overview in the help button. Um, and here comes the exhibits. So you can use those arrows to um, flip during within the same testlet, like go to the prior questions or to the next questions using these arrows here in the exhibits buttons. And here's the um, flag. This, once you like click on this flag button, it's like a reminder to go back and review this question when you need or something. So here's basically the written communication question. Um, the first thing you should do always when you um, go to a written communication question is to read the question carefully. And you can read it more than once, like you can read it twice. Make sure that you know exactly what they are asking you and what they want you to do. So here, let's read it quickly. Let me like do this example together with you to show you how you can write a great written communication question. The board of directors of Copper INC is currently reviewing options to increase production in order to meet growing demand, but is hesitant to increase its operating leverage. The two options being reviewed are expanding production and capacity by acquiring new equipment and outsourcing the existing production to another firm. The acquisition of new assets would require additional financing. Write a memo to the board explaining the effect that each option would have on Copper's operating leverage. Type for communication in the response area below. So what we understand from this question exactly is that um, they want us to write a memo here. They're, they're asking us exactly to write a memo okay and discuss two different options um copper is thinking of which uh, which will impact its operating leverage so the main topic here that we must write about is the operating leverage and we are required to explain the effect of two options this company wants to take on its operating leverage so the first option they're talking about here is um uh, expanding the production capacity by acquiring new equipment and the second option is outsourcing the existing production to another firm. So once you read this question, the first thing I want you guys to do, you should have, of course, a paper and a pencil from Vermitric. And the first thing I want you is to write your ideas on this piece of paper. Write like uh, four to five ideas you would like to discuss during this uh, written communication in this document. So, for example, if it was me, um, the first thing I would write about is the operating leverage. So. I would like uh, make a special paragraph to talk about operating leverage and what I learned when I studied it because it's you know it's a topic in the BEC uh, book right so uh, write general things about operating leverage like what is operating leverage what impacts it uh, how it changes uh, uh, how fixed costs and variable core costs impact the operating leverage right so this should be like a, a whole paragraph talking about operating leverage. And then you should have a paragraph um, talking about each option. So you should have a paragraph talking about the first option here, which is um, expanding production capacity by acquiring new equipment. So there should be a, a, a separate paragraph only talking about acquiring new equipment and how this equipment will impact the operating leverage. And then you should have another paragraph for the second option, which is outsourcing the existing production to another firm and how this will impact the operating leverage. So here we got three body paragraphs, which are like the ideas are ready and they are ready to be written by us, right? So let me, uh, let's go quickly and see the um, answer to this question and the memo that we should write. So all those guys, um, you should, your, your memo should start with an introductory paragraph. If it was a memo or even a letter, or always make sure to start with an introductory paragraph. And an introdu introductory paragraph is basically um, like the introductory paragraph is the easiest of all paragraphs because 
what you do actually is you just rewrite the question. So here um, you are just going to restate the question again. Okay, and then you're gonna, the last um, sentence of it will be writing the purpose of your memo. So here, as we said here, um, the introductory paragraph says, in order to meet growing demands, the board of directors of copper is reviewing two options. The options are to increase production capacity by acquiring new equipment and outsourcing the existing production to another firm. So basically this, uh, these two sentences are rewriting the um, question again. We, we're just like summarizing the question again, right? So um, this should be like the first part of our introductory paragraph. Now the last sentence of our introductory paragraph should always be the purpose. So what is the purpose of the question? The purpose of this memo is to explain what's the purpose of, so what's the purpose of your memo, okay, which is basically what the question is asking you to do. The purpose of this memo is to explain the impact that the two options would have on operating leverage. So um, this is basically and uh, will be a ready introductory paragraph for your uh, written communication. Now, um, you're going to write here two or three body paragraphs. And as, as I said, based on the ideas that are in the question and the topics, you can write three body paragraphs. The first one will be talking about the operating leverage in general. The second body paragraph will be talking about the first option, which is acquisition of new equipment and how it will impact operating leverage. And the third body paragraph will be talking about outsourcing the existing production and how it will impact operating leverage. So these are basically the uh, the three body paragraphs that you should write. And um, I don't want to go just like a lot deep into those paragraphs. But for example, here, uh, we talk about operating leverage. Uh, you're, you're not going to get like, you're not going to invent the wheels. It's what you learned, like write the simple things you learned during studying for your BEC exam. So here, for example, you can write operating leverage measures a company's fixed costs relative to total costs. A company with no fixed costs has an operating leverage equal to one, and the leverage increases to a value greater than one as fixed costs increase. A company with low operating leverage has mostly variable costs and it does not have to generate large sales volume to recover its fixed costs. However, the per unit profit margin does not improve as sales volumes increase. And then you can talk also about a company with higher operating leverage must attain sufficient sales volume to recover the high fixed costs. So these are, for example, what you can write here. And then, you, you, so um, as you can see, the first sentence always, you can write like um, the topic you want to discuss about. And then the other sentences are supportive to the first sentence or to the topic you're talking about. And then comes the second one, the, the second body paragraph, which is talking about the first option and how it will, it will impact the operating leverage. And the third paragraph, and finally, um, you should always have a conclusion paragraph, right? So in this paragraph, you write your opinion, right? You, you write your opinion. So you write here, um, which of these two options will mostly impact the uh, operating leverage. So here our conclusion for it says, of the two options considered, outsourcing existing production has the least impact on operating leverage, assuming copper, assuming Cooper can successfully negotiate a per unit price contract. Financing the acquisition of new equipment would likely increase the operating leverage more than outsourcing as it results in higher fixed costs in the form of interest expense. So these are my best nine tips to master the written communication section of the CPA exam. Comment below and tell me if you are going to implement these tips during studying for the CPA exam. Watch this video to learn how to apply for the CPA exam. I give in this video step-by-step -step tutorial on how to go to NASPA and apply through NASPA Central to your CPA exam. To get my best tips and tricks to pass the four parts of the CPA exam, make sure to watch these four videos, which I give you my best tips and tricks to pass the far part of the exam, the audit part of the exam, the break part of the exam, and the BEC part of the exam. Make sure to get your CPA exam application cheat sheet. It's in the description below. It's totally free and it tells you step by step how to apply for the CPA exam. So make sure to go grab your cheat sheet from the description below. Remember, go after what you want. Pass the CPA exam because you 
can become CPAs and save the world.